Welcome back. Well, today I am joined by Lisa Molina and Sherry Primes, who are here on behalf of the Southern California Pomeranian Rescue. Well, welcome everyone. How are you? We're good. Good morning. Good morning. We're so happy to be here. Yes. Thank you for joining us. Now, I know you have a couple little cuties with you. This is <laughs> Lulu, Lulu, yeah, who is just is darling. Yeah. You think she's around six or seven years old? Right around there. Okay, and then you have Lulu. No, this is no, this Gumbo. is Gumbo. That's yeah. Lulu. Okay, <laughs> Gumbo. Gumbo's young. He's probably like one or two years old. Okay, okay, and he's adorable too. So basically, you just guys, obviously, in the name, is mostly Pomeranian puppies. Our dogs, just in general. We do Pomeranians, but we'll, we're equal opportunity. We'll help okay. any dog that needs help if we have space. But yeah. we okay. focus mainly on Pomeranians. About 80% oh. or uh, of our dogs are Poms or Pom mixes, okay. and the other 20% are other small breeds, oh, typically okay. speaking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's good. We yeah. don't have a kennel, so we try to keep the dogs small oh, so right. we can keep them in people's homes, like foster homes. Okay. All right. So tell me a little bit about the organization and how it got started. So the organization got started through Pomeranian lovers, you know? <laughs> we all love Pomeranians. Aww, yeah. um, we all have unique gifts for Poms. I've trained dogs. Sherry's good with socialization and, you know, we all just... Fundraising and events and relationship We all put in our unique talents and just make it happen. Okay. So we wanted to make a difference. We, we saw did, how many dogs are being euthanized. Yeah. And we're like, how can we help? And we can help by doing a little bit, you know, helping dogs, especially the ones that we love. They give so much back to us. So. Yeah. Exactly. And, and in some of your notes, you were saying, now, now I imagine that this has been happening, obviously, since the pandemic. The first year happened and everyone got a dog, right? Because they're all home, working from their homes, and they got dogs. Now you're seeing more dogs that are probably uh, being relinquished into shelters. Um, are you seeing that also with your kinds of dogs? Yeah, but we talked about it at the beginning of the pandemic when it started happening. We we knew that at some point when people went back to work that people would start, you mm -hmm. know, realizing, oh, I'm going back to work. What am I going to do with this dog? And some mm -hmm. people just can't handle it. So we kind of prepared in advance. We had a feeling that was going to happen. Okay, so did you get an influx of dogs? We got an influx of dogs, but because we're not an open admission shelter, which means we can make a decision on whether we take a dog or not, mm -hmm. we just took in what we could handle. Okay. And we were very careful about placing them, making sure right. it was somebody who had had a dog before that was really okay. looking for a dog, okay. and not somebody that was just kind of like, oh my gosh, I need a dog, everyone's getting a dog, and, right. and then they're gonna return the dog. Okay. We didn't want that. Now, in addition to adopting um, animals, you also have needs for surgically helping them too, and there's a couple of urgent needs that you guys have right now. Tell yes. me a little bit about that. Do you want to talk about Frankie? Oh, yeah. We have a, a little dog that is, is struggling with parvo, which is oh, yeah. one mm -hmm. of the most deadliest, if not the most deadliest, um, virus for small dogs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's, he's not really doing well. We're doing all we can do. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's costly, and what's really sad about it is it can be avoided by a $20 parvo shot. Oh, sheesh. Yeah. You know, when you, when you have puppies, you know, you give them their shots. Okay. And that avoids things like this happening. Okay. So okay. he was found, brought to the shelter they called us. Mm -hmm. We're a network partner of the shelters, and when yeah. they get special cases, they'll call us, and if okay. we can help. Okay. We just say yes. We don't know what we're getting into, but <laughs> that's what rescues do. So. Exactly. Yeah. And then you have yeah. another one named Sophie? Oh, Sophie, yeah. we love Sophie. Adorable. <laughs> yeah. Sophie needs to have a, a, an operation um, mm -hmm. in her private area. Okay. <laughs> Poor little thing. Yeah, she's kind of incontinent because of it, but it yeah. can be corrected. So, okay. you yeah. know, we're but trying boy, to help anytime you open that. up a dog, I mean, anytime you open a human, it's always thousands of dollars, and there's yeah. really no dog insurance. I mean, there is, but there is. many don't have that, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, it's not, it, when you get a dog in like this, when you're doing rescue, you don't know what you're getting into. Okay. So you can't have insurance on every single dog. So mm -hmm. you're absolutely right. There is not insurance unless an organization can afford to insure every single dog they take in. Right. Which right. is probably unlikely. <laughs> and a, a lot of people don't realize that we are a strictly volunteer run organization. Right. There are no employees of Southern California Pomeranian Rescue. So mm -hmm. we're just very fortunate to have this unbelievably talented group of people and everybody that comes to us, they have things that, that they're just so good at, and right. we just let them do what they're really good at, and right. it just and complements each other. Yeah. They're all passionate, um, but as a 501c3 nonprofit, 
We do survive solely on donations and grant money and any right. fundraising that we can do on our right. own. So, right. so it's with hard. that, when you adopt a puppy, obviously there is a there is a fee, and that money does go back to the organization. Although, um, if they adopt a dog, is that considered? A, a, is it like a donation, or how does that work? Yes. Yeah, so we have um, our fees are unbelievably reasonable compared to a lot of people that do what we do. Mm -hmm. We usually have way more in the dog, medically speaking, than what we ask for for a, a very reasonable donation mm -hmm. and Lisa's so giving that last year was it last year the year before we raised the rates um, for the first time I've been with the rescue since like 2009 yeah. I think something mm -hmm. like that. Raised like $50. Mm -hmm. she, yeah, <laughs> right. I mean, so not much. It, it, in right. all the years right. I had been here, that was the first time she ever raised right. it. So we typically run like three to four fifty ish. You know, okay. very reasonable. Right. Between three hundred right. and four hundred. Right. Usually, Plus, usually it's three fifty. Well, and you're getting it. You're getting a puppy that's good to go. So that's yeah. a dog yeah. that's There's good to go. Yeah, spayed, neutered, yeah. microchipped, yeah. Great. up to date on shots and any issues like with her her female problems yeah taken care of okay if the parvo puppy makes it yeah you know, yeah he'll ha be immune to parvo and he'll be a normal little puppy. right so. right now when somebody wants to adopt one of your animals they go to your website and that's socalpalmrescue.org mm -hmm. and uh, what I found interesting is that it goes to adoptapet.com so is that just sort of an engine that has animals on there uh, for you? There's some really great organizations out there that help rescues. So adoptapet.com okay. is one and petfinders.com is one. Okay. Um, so you can look on our website. We link with yeah. them and they yeah. upload all of our information. So right. anybody who's searching for a dog anywhere that's looking for a Pomeranian, they'll come oh, up. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. And we have adoption applications available on our right. website and right. information about us and people can email us. You're and <laughs> as you know, they can watch us on Facebook. Right. And I wanted Instagram. to mention to everybody that, that you can do that. And it's really, it's fun because you're not really doing in-person ones yet. So you're doing a live one, which is on Facebook and Instagram, yeah. and um, I do have that information that we'll show in just a minute. But I did want to ask you on the times, because do you do the Instagram one first and then Facebook? Or yes, does it... we do. Okay. And um, we have been starting Instagram around 2.30, and then we do Facebook shortly after that. Okay. Um, we're always late, but you know we're a group of volunteers well, you're dealing doing with, the best well, you're dealing we with can. Live things yeah, too, we're so doing you know, they, yeah. How they have their own time. Might be. <laughs> Although these two aren't, you guys are being good. Yes, you. We are. had one day all the dogs ran through the sprinklers, oh. and it was like so we had to wait. You know, <laughs> try to drive I off. I love it. it. I love it. Is there anything in particular that I've missed that you may want to let our audience know? <laughs> wow, there's just so much. I, I know. First of all, we, thank you for having yeah, us here. We're and so just, grateful. You know, bringing awareness to the joy of having a pet. And yeah. we are so open to a lot of rescues are worried about people living in apartments. Yeah. We love apartments because we know the dog is not going to be like living out in the backyard. Right. And so that makes us happy. Um, whatever your age is, as long as you're over 21, okay. you know, okay. you're able to adopt from us. We have different programs. and yeah. we. We just want to find homes for these little well, babies. Well, yeah. they're small animals where, right. you, like you said, apartments or smaller homes, yeah. small yards. They're perfect. And I love what you guys say is like when you when you when you take on a puppy, either fostering or owning one, you you get out and get some exercise, which is true. It helps yes. get us out of our buns oh, yes. and get out there and relief. do. Yeah, um, absolutely. It's calming. We've been doing some really great like pop up events where people come. And they just hold the dogs, and you just Aww. see them. You know, if it's if they're so socially awkward, they're yep. just like changes everything. Yeah. I walk my dogs two to four times a day. I mean, not just because they need it and like it, but I need it. <laughs> yeah, I like yeah. it. Like, well, it's, it's fun a, to see them too. It's like you know, a child where you see what they're doing too, and they're always and so yeah, curious. But it does push they make you us to happy. keep moving. They do, and you guys are so cute. Aww. I'm glad you brought them to us, and these two are available um, right. now, and they're Lulu. on your website, correct? They are. Yes. All right, perfect. Gumbo and Lulu. Gumbo and Lulu. <laughs> Adorable. All right, you people out there, we need you to foster and adopt these adorable puppies. So make sure you get in touch <laughs> with us. Thank you both so much. Thank I you appreciate so much. it. Thank it's so you, great to Lisa. be here. Nice to meet you both. <laughs> nice to meet you as well. And remember, if you want more information about either of these adorable puppies or many more that they have, or if you'd like to foster, you can go to socalpalmrescue.org. We'll be right back. Aww. <laughs>